what's up you guys my name is Beth welcome back to my channel today I have a book tag for you it is the page 112 tag which was created by da -da -da, Sean the book maniac and I will link his video below this book tag was based on the premise of a literary prize in France where the judges would create a short list from a long list just by judging novels or not necessarily novels I guess but books based on the 112th page alone not knowing the author or the uh or the um not knowing the author or the title of the book just the 112th page so for this book tag what you're supposed to do is I'm assuming what you're supposed to do is <laughs> you pick a, a couple of books that you haven't read and you read the 112th page and judge the book just based on that. So what I'm going to do is I have three books here. I have not read them. Two of them are quite popular. The other one was popular at one point. I'm going to label them book one, two, and three. I'm going to read the 112th page of each of them. At the end, I will reveal, reveal what they are. I actually do have people to tag for this book tag, so that's exciting. All right, so enough of my rambling. I'm just gonna get right into it. This is book number one, and it starts with the ending of a sentence, so. Father's death. His companionship replaced the long solitary hours in the woods. I became a much better hunter when I didn't have to look over my shoulder constantly, when someone was watching my back. But he turned into so much more than a hunting partner. He became my confidant, someone with whom I could share thoughts I could never voice inside the fence. I exchange, in exchange, he trusted me with his. Being out in the woods with Gail, sometimes I was actually happy. I call him my friend, but in the last year it seemed too casual a word, a casual a word for what Gail is to me. A pang of longing shoots through my chest if only he was with me now but of course I don't want that I don't want him in the arena where he'd be dead in a few days I just I just miss him and I hate being so alone does he miss me he must I think of the 11th flashing under my name last night I know exactly what he'd say to me well there's some room for improvement there and then he'd give me a smile and I'd return it without hesitating now I can't help comparing what I have with Gail to what I'm pretending to have with Peta. How I never question Gail's motives while I do nothing but doubt the laters. The latters. It's not fair a fair comparison, really. Gail and I are thrown together by our mutual need to survive. Peta and I know know each other survive know each other's survival means our own death. How do you sidestep that? Effie's knocking at the door, reminding me there's another big, big day ahead. Tomorrow night will be... And then it ends there. I think you might be able to guess what book that is. And that's right, I have never read it before. This is page 112 from book number two. I sneak a look at Suge. Oh, Miss Seely, she say, and put her arms around me. They black and smooth and kind of glowy from the lamplight. I start to cry too. I cry and cry and cry. Seem like it all come back to me laying there with Shug in Shug arms. It hurt how much I was surprised. It stung while I finished trimming his hair. The blood dripped down my leg and mess up my stocking. How he don't never look at me straight after that. And Nettie. Don't cry, Seely, Shug say. Don't cry. She start kissing the water that comes down the side of my face. After a while, I say, Mama finally asked how come he find his hair in the girls' room if he don't ever go up there like he say. That when he, that's when he told her I had a boyfriend. Some boy he say he seen sneaking out the back door. It's it the boy's hair, he say, not his. You know how she loved to cut anybody hair, he say. I did love to cut hair, I say to Suge, since I was a little bitty thing. I'd run and go get the scissors if I saw a hair coming, and I'd cut and cut as long as I could. That how come I was the one that cut his hair, but always before I cut it in the front porch. 
it got to the place where every time every time I saw him coming with the scissors and the comb and the stool I start to cry Shug say well sir and I it was only white folks doing freakish things like that my mama die I tell Shug my sister Nettie run away Mr. Blank come get me and take care of his rotten children he never asked me nothing about myself he clam on top of me and fuck and fuck even when my head banged nobody ever loved me i say sorry for stumbling there the vernacular is not something that i'm used to reading that was very emotional actually um and just based on the names if you have seen the movie that this book uh was adapted to then you may know what this book is also. The first one was kind of a dead giveaway based on the names of the characters, and the next one may be a giveaway also. This is page 112 of book number three. Levi was laughing so hard he had to lean against the wall with both hands. Regan walked in and said something, but Kath didn't catch it. She reached up to her desk and closed the laptop, stopping the music. Levi's laughter rang out in the sudden quiet. Kath was completely out of breath, and she landed wrong on her knee. What the major fuck, Reagan said, more shocked than angry. At least Kath didn't think she seemed angry. Emergency dance party, Levi said, jumping off the bed and reaching out to help Kath. Kath held on to the desk and stood up. Okay, he asked. She smiled and nodded her head. Have you, ever, have you met Cather? Levi and said to Reagan, his face... <laughs> still shining with amusement she spits hot fire this is exactly the sort of day i'm having reagan said setting down her bag and kicking off her shoes weird weird shit around every corner i'm going out you coming sure levi said turned to kath you coming reagan reagan looked at kath and frowned kath felt something sticky blooming again in her stomach Maybe the scene with Professor F Piping was coming back to her, or maybe she shouldn't have been dancing with her roommate's boyfriend. You should come, Regan said. She seemed sincere. Kath tugged at the hem of her t-shirt. Nah, it's already late. I'm just gonna write. She reached for her phone out of habit and checked it. She'd missed a text message. From Wren. At Muggsy's. Come now, 911. Kath checked the time. Wren had texted her 20 minutes ago while she and Levi were dancing. She set her phone on her desk and started putting her boots on over her pajama pants. Is everything okay? Levi asked. I don't know. Kath shook her head. She felt ashamed again and scared. Her stomach seemed thrilled to have something new to twist about. What is Muggsy's? And hopefully that's Le I'm pronouncing these names right Levi L-E-V-I and that's not Levy Levi Levy anyway okay so that was book number three uh, my opinions of these books well based on page 112 the first book I wanted to read but had never really gotten to and uh, it's very popular and it has movie adaptations and I'm sure you know what it is but uh, it's having, it sounds really interesting, actually. It kind of makes me want to read it. And then um, the second book I know deals with a lot of deep and dark issues. And it also has a popular movie adaptation. Um, and even that was a, a picture of something very dark and sad. And I tripped over the words in all of the books but in that one especially because the vernacular is so different and I kind of like that in books anyway um, and then in the last book uh, it's a very popular book but I had not been wanting to read it just because I didn't really feel like it but the writing seems pretty good so maybe I am have a refreshed desire to give it a chance all right so now is the time that I reveal to you what books number one two and three were Book number one was The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. Uh, this was obviously talking about uh, Gail versus Peta and Gail being like her hunting partner and her confidant and him and, her, and Katniss missing him. So, I mean, that was kind of a giveaway. Uh, book number two was The Color Purple. You might have recognized that from the name Seely and the name Suge. So, 
yeah, th this has some really dark themes that I just haven't really felt up to reading. And then the final book is Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. Oh, and I didn't say the author of The Color Purple. It's by Alice Walker. All right, so that was the 112 page book tag or just tag. I tag, ooh, I have people to tag. I tag the following channels, City of Books, The Lost Reader, and, oh gosh, Molly Strzelecki. And I hope I didn't butcher that name. I probably butchered that name. I'm sorry, Molly. I could barely read those pages. So, I mean, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching. I can't believe this is almost 11 minutes long already. Uh, so that has been my book tag. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, give it a like. If you're new here, please subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.